All right, we should be good to go. All right. The chair notes the time is 4.35. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We'll begin with the roll call of the ZBA members. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Philip White. Here. Mr. David Sloviter. Present. Ms. Hilda Greenbaum. Uh, Ms. Sarah Marshall. Here. The quorum is present. Also attending the public hearing tonight is Rob Mora, Building Commissioner, and Mr. Rob Wachilla, Planner for the Town. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Act of 2021 and extended by Chapter 2 of the Act of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the Town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff and may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raise hand function on their screen or by pressing star nine on their phone. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, please provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings when the information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merit, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing of the variance to file this decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda is a public hearing, ZBA FY 2024-16, Craig and Rachel Gibson, request for modification to an existing special permit, ZBA FY 2015-00027, under section 10.33 and 3.241.6 of the zoning bylaw to change the occupancy status of a converted dwelling from owner-occupied to non-owner-occupied with a resident manager with requested waivers from traffic impact study, lighting and landscape plans at 50 McClellan Street, map 11C, parcel 189, RG, General Residence Zoning District. This hearing is continued from um, April 18th, 2024. After that, there's a general public comment period, uh, time for new business not anticipated within the last 48 hours and adjournment. The first order of business is a public hearing on ZBA FY 2024-16, Rachel and Craig Gibson at 50 McClellan Street um, continued from April 18th. So we have attendees, people in attendance, all right? We have a panelist. Um, I want to just run through quickly the um, submissions we've received since the last meeting. Uh, we've received an updated management plan with the resident manager's job description. We've received a standard residential, an updated or changed standard residential lease agreement. Um, those are the two things that have been, two documents that have been updated uh, since the last meeting. So um, I guess there were a couple of questions at the last meeting that we focused on. One was a job description and the job qualifications of the resident manager. Another was the 
the lease itself, and the third was a lease to individuals as opposed to a group in a, um, a multi-person uh, lease at home. So those are the three issues we dealt with, uh, or dealing with last week and hope to have um, resolution of in today. And so I guess this would be the place for the Gibsons to uh, present what they have, um, the response to our questions, and then the board to ask questions from that. So if uh, Mr. Gibson, well, who's going to speak? Do you have to bring Craig in? All right, Mr. Gibson in. He yep, is, I just promoted him to panelists and he should be, yep, there's his camera and his microphone. Yep, there we go. Hello, Mr. Gibson, give us your name and address for the record. Hi, this is Craig Gibson at 50 McClellan Street. Are you able to hear me? Yep, loud and clear. So last week we, um, or last time we met, there were three items we talked about. I just, I think you just heard me go through them. Do you want to address those and any other issues that uh, you want to, the board to consider tonight? Um, we took your considerations and uh, worked really hard to try to get a, a better understanding of the uh, resident manager and we thought we had uh, came up with a good plan and we're going to put a resident manager in our efficiency apartment that'll run the uh, and and that's a that's a must we'll we'll definitely comply with that and we I think that we came up with a good plan for that. And did you, it looks to me to be a, a lease that's more fulsome than the lease that you originally, is this yep. a, is this yep. we have a lease that is uh, dedicated to the resident manager also. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then lastly, there was an issue uh, that Ms. Greenbaum raised regarding um, rental to individuals rather than rental to a group. You're still planning on renting to individuals in the main house for separate individuals? You haven't, have you changed that plan at all? Uh, I don't remember that being an issue, but I, I we plan to do to individuals. Okay. That plan. All right. I thought it was so, just the two things. Yeah. Yeah. No. I uh, there are two things. Two things you had to provide, and I think you did. Uh, you responded to that. Um, I think it looks to me like the residential manager description and the selection criteria um, is an improvement over what was in contained uh, two weeks ago. Um, so I think you've done a good job with that. I know that Mr. Sloger had real, con you, you raised this issue strongly. I'd like to hear your opinion and the rest of the board. Well, um... The plan that you submitted is certainly an improvement. It it commits that the resident manager will be in the the uh, how did you refer to that unit? I lost the word already. Efficiency. Efficiency. Right in the efficiency unit. Uh, the the process that you described with references with advertising clearly uh, the amount of discount is not relevant to me. But uh, clearly, there will there is some sort of implied compensation for this position, so the person is committing to do something for you. So I think you've addressed most of the concerns. I I still have a couple of they may be more questions than anything. Is it possible? And I guess I'm asking. Mr. Wachilla or Mr. Moore more than anyone, is it possible to stipulate that the resident manager does not have a, a social or any other kind of connection to the residents of the main unit? I mean, I wouldn't want the fifth pal to be the manager. Then there would be less, there might be more reluctance to insist on certain behavior. I don't know if that's possible, but it occurred to me. Um, Mr. Mora? That sounds really difficult to uh, be on top of uh, and even aware of. I, I think if, um, you know, there could be an obvious situation if all five tenants were, you know, part of an athletic team or some club, it might be obvious. Uh, but 
uh, I think writing that into the lease is going to be very difficult to uh, see anybody either enforce or apply or maybe even be interested in. That That's actually the answer I expected. I was, I just wanted to ask it and, and be a little hopeful. Um, the other thing. Just add one other thing, Dave. One, one other thing. Once they're in there, uh, the five individuals are residing there, there's going to become, they could, potentially could become friends. At least they'll be yeah. more than acquaintances. And so I right. wouldn't want to dis disqualify somebody because they've made friends with the people next door. No, and so, we can't, and I guess we can't stipulate that the resident manager has to be the most unpleasant person that they can possibly <laughs> find. Right. So there is quite a separation from in the group, in the entrances, right. and they're not sharing bathrooms or, um, or even entrances. Yep. Right. No, I I understand. So I I think you've come up with a credible approach to finding an independent, qualified resident manager. More than anything, I was looking for qualified. I have one question. As long as I'm. Uh, speaking of about the lease, if you're if you are renting to four individuals as opposed to four people all on one lease, they are not collectively responsible. It seems they are individually responsible. So, is there any? Does it work better if they are all on one lease? And then if there's a violation, they are all somehow responsible and uh, and, and they're responsible for fixing the situation as opposed to blaming one person. I'm trying to anticipate while we still have any possibility of influencing something. Is that to me? Anybody, I don't care. And it, well, I guess it's also to Mr. Mara. Maybe. Mr. Mara? Or Mr. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd be interested in the owner or manager's response to this because ultimately, if there's a violation that's being enforced, uh, you know, the town will cite the owner of the property. So whatever... Uh, lease agreement or language is in place between the, the landlord or the owner and the tenant is going to be important for their uh, ability to either, you know, pass on fines or uh, gain compliance to whatever mechanisms are available. So uh, I, I guess I'll end with, you know, it's not uncommon to have, uh, you know, rental by the room or to the individual uh, multiple leases is a pretty common thing, but I've never, you know, had to deal with the owners trying to, um, get, get the responsible party to, um, you know, be, be responsible for whatever issue has come up. It collectively has always, uh, worked out one way or the other from our view. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, my concerns are pretty much answered. So I'm all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sloviter. Um, Ms. Marshall. Yes, this is the, the plan for the resident manager is a great improvement. So um, I really just have one question about the lease. This is the lease for both the tenants in the four bedroom part of the structure and for the resident manager. Resident manager has its own a dedicated uh, lease with a, a lot more, uh, I, I included that, it has a lot more information about what the job title is, what the, um, and what it entails. And, and it's also part of the, uh, when we advertise it, what the management, what the resident manager it needs to. Uh, um, right, right. My, my question is, so then where's the other lease? Or we just got one lease, I think, in our packets. When I looked online, we just had the one. It's at least it's tenant slash resident manager. That's right. that. That's what I'm asking. So oh, like, sorry. For everybody the else. Tenant has the same to... one, except for the resident manager sections taken just cross out. Cross that off. Okay. okay. Thank you. 
which is from uh, the Amherst uh, website too. Right. Standard. And Mr. White. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Gibson, thank you for uh, coming back with the information we were requesting. My question is more for Mr. Mora. Um, with regards to the last meeting, I know Ms. Greenbaum had some questions about the kind of legality of the independent leases. Um, since we do have Mr. Mora on the call, um, I wonder if he'd be able to speak just for the record um, that there's going to be no legal issue with having individual leases. I mean, I don't suspect there will since you just said they're very common in the town of Amherst, but just for clarity's sake, I would appreciate that. Mr. Mora. Sure, and I wasn't at the prior meeting, but I did hear uh, from Mr. Wachel a little bit about uh, the issues that Ms. Greenbaum raised. And I believe she was referring to uh, the lodging and boarding regulations in Article 5 of our zoning bylaw and concern that there, there may not be the ability to uh, offer uh, uh, rooms or individuals leases beyond a certain number because of the cap that's uh, specified in Article 5, uh, which is three uh, unrelated individuals. Uh, why that doesn't apply is that it's that's an accessory use to a principal use of the property, which would be an owner-occupied uh, dwelling. And those provisions would apply if, um, you know, if, if Mr. Gibson was staying in the home and renting out three rooms, the limit would be three individual leases. Uh, but that entire section has, has no applicability because the principal use is now changing from that owner-occupied dwelling to the non-owner-occupied converted dwelling, and Article 5 just doesn't apply in that case. So, and that's the only instance where uh, there would be a limit on the number of individual leases unless it was a condition of a special permit. Okay. okay. Ms. Marshall. Yeah, the question, just so I understand what uh, Rob Mora, understand that regula regulation, does that mean that if if the property owner were to live in the efficiency apartment, he could not rent out the main house to four people? I, I don't think no. so. No, so there, there's two dwelling units uh, uh, on the property. So by definition, there are two individual dwelling units. The zoning bylaw, how it applies, maximum number of units or, or individuals in each unit is four. That would be the case no matter what. If the owner was living in one of the units, uh, Mr. Gibson could rent three rooms in, in his unit in addition to the rental of the other unit to four separate individuals. Uh, well, one of them is a studio. So there's one person. Sure. So I guess in the example of two equal multiple bedroom units where it would work, the way the bylaw, what the bylaw allows is that the owner occupied unit, dwelling unit, could have accessory lodging and boarding up to three individuals or three rooms. Okay. Uh, so it just doesn't fit here uh, in it. this case. Got it. Thank you. Mr. Wasilla. I just want to say that um, in regards to the lease that's only going to be used for the tenants, that was included in a previous meeting packet. Um, so we do have on our permit file for this case, a copy of the regular lease and a copy of the lease with a resident manager attached to it. Just want to provide the information to the board. Thank you. But I think we thought that first lease was, we recommended the owner use a more detailed one. So I was assuming that this lease now is replacing the earlier one. And that's, yeah, that's what I thought Mr. Gibson said is that it wouldn't have, for the regular, it, it wouldn't have section, it looks like section 28 resident manager wouldn't be included in the other, for the lease with the other four individuals, that provision. Is that right? You'd use the same lease, except you'd cross out the resident manager provision. Mr. Gibson? Yep. Okay, so this lease that you submitted to us is the current lease that you intend to use for the four individuals at just by excising 
the resident manager description job. Um, Correct. That was advised by the town okay. management uh, people. Yep. That was sufficient. Got it. Okay, that clarifies it. Does that clarify it for you, Ms. Marshall? Yes, thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? Anything else that you wish to present, Mr. Gibson? No, I I got um, no. All right. All right. I wish my uh, wife could be here. She's she's uh, teaching right now, and I'm late for my another commitment by myself. So, all but right. this is important. So I I need to get this done. Okay. Um, next, if there's no further questions, we have time for public comment. I notice there's six uh, five attendees. Yep, um, five attendees. If um, people the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by raising their hand. And then um, when called upon, please give your name and address for the record and keep your comments to about three minutes. I'll start a clock just to help you stay to that. So it looks like the first uh, hand up is uh, Ms. Joan O'Meara. I don't know if you can hear me. Yep, we can hear you. Oh, great, hi everyone. So- um, oh, Just give us your- uh, Oh, sorry. Joan O'Meara, 37 Cosby Avenue, Amherst, Mass. Is that sufficient? Yep, that's good. Hi. Um, so I'm a little puzzled, truthfully, philosophically, why the town even bothers to do owner-occupied zoning board meetings when we continue to change owner-occupied status, meaning what is the point of owner occupation when someone decides to move on from their property and convert it to non-owner occupied? How, I don't know philosophically how the town has a, a rationale for changing it to a non-owner occupied residency. Philosophically, <laughs> I know the property only has a right to do what they want, but the impact on the rest of the community is significant, as you well know. And that's why they're moving, <laughs> because they didn't want to be near students. No, that's not the reason. Well, Mr. Gibson, you have every reason to respond afterwards. You're right. Okay. It's your right. So I don't want to argue that point. But I, we just went through this process a few weeks ago that we are required to be owner occupied residents because we have an accessible dwelling unit. And we're happy to do that. We're happy to be owner occupied. But where where is the logic to continue to change this? Capitalism. <laughs> I don't know if anyone wants to answer that question. You know, the, the board of the respond or the participant can respond after all the public comments if they choose. Yep. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Ms. O'Meara. Thanks, Joan. Um, are there any other people who wish to comment? Not seeing any hands up, Mr. Chair. Oh, uh, well. John Rosenthal just raised his hand. Mr. Rosenthal, just give us your name and address for the record. On mute here. Can you hear me? Yep, sure yep. can. Yeah, my name is John Rosenthal. I live at 51 McClellan Street, directly across from 50 McClellan Street. Uh, when I heard uh, that um, this uh, issue was coming up, I went over and I spoke to Craig and he told me essentially uh, why he was moving and uh, what his long-term intentions were for this particular property, which I gather is to keep it in the family. Is that correct, Craig? And uh, so uh, uh, he has been uh, a, a, a very good neighbor and I am sure that he is going to uh, uh, require that this is a uh, well-run household. And uh, I can only say that because I have 
uh, known Craig for several years now, and that's what I expect him to do, to uh, to keep this as a a, a neighborhood uh, uh, a plus. Okay, that's all I want to say, and I'm I'm in support of this particular application, and and uh, and uh, hope that you will vote it through. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Other public comments? Not seeing any hands up, Mr. Chair. No. All right, uh, Mr. Gibson, you can respond to the public comment if you wish. John, I still plan to uh, um, get the snow off your driveway. I'm gonna miss you. And I'll be around, I'll be at the brunches. All right, um, is there any board comments? Ms. Marshall. Uh, I, I would say that um, I view my role as applying the zoning bylaw, but I don't write it. So <laughs> I can't speak to why it has been designed the way it is, but we, or I at least, but I think all of us are certainly trying to make sure that, um, you know, a project is thoroughly vetted and the neighborhood is protected as best we can within the, uh, the powers given to us by the bylaw, that's all. Mr. Sloboder. Uh, this is just a, a comment expressing how I view this in general. Uh, I think that Mr. Gibson has complied with everything that was requested of him and that he is making a good faith effort to make this property not an objectionable one. I have a basic ongoing concern about changing owner-occupied to non-owner-occupied. I sympathize with Ms. O'Meara and her comments. I feel this way because of the proven data that non-owner-occupied properties become are more likely to be problems. And also because I live across the street from a non-owner-occupied property where the tenants, in spite of the fact that they have a lovely backyard, believe that barbecues, beer pong, and late night loud discussions are best done in the front and on the front porch. So I have an inherent skepticism and uncomfortable feeling. This property is on the line between one half of the block that has a lot of student rentals and the other half of the block that has very few. And I don't, I'm not entirely comfortable with this creeping down and changing the neighborhood. But I didn't hear a lot of neighborhood opposition, which I was waiting for if that would show up. And I also believe that what Ms. Marshall said about we are here to interpret the rules. We don't make the rules. We we comply unless there is a really compelling reason not to. So I just wanted to express my, I'm, I'm going to support this because I think Mr. Gibson has, has comported himself well and uh, is, is doing the best he can. I'm sorry that he's leaving the neighborhood and changing the status of the unit. And I can only hope that moving forward, the resident manager is heavily vetted and very responsible and is a real annoyance to anybody in the main pro property that does not behave. So thank you for at least letting me express that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I would just have one comment. Um, and I think Ms. O'Meara, Joan really raises a problem that we've all faced, which is uh, we have to, the fundamental decision is, is this going to be detriment to the neighborhood? And that's really what requires, you know, the 
judgment that we have to make. It's clearly allowed by the zoning bylaw, and we have the we have the discretion to think to say that this is going to be um, the plan before us, the special permit before us will 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 be will work to the detriment of the neighborhood, will become an annoyance, all the kinds of things we have to find under 10.38. And I think in this case, for a, a multitude of reasons, one of which Mr. Sloviter has just mentioned, being that this is the first, this will just add on to the entire student rental property on the, up to his property uh, that's already there. So I don't, and then the rest of the neighborhood, rest of the block is pretty much owner occupied. I don't think it's going to be a dramatic change in the quality or the character of the neighborhood. And I don't see that that in and of itself will work to the detriment of the neighborhood, especially since I think we have a good resident manager provision that we don't always see. And I think Ms. Marshall is also right. Uh, we are given what we are given the zoning bylaw to interpret. We are given discretion. We have to make certain findings under 10.38. And if we can't make those findings, we don't approve the we don't approve the, the special permit application for a non-owner occupied property. And that's happened at times uh, by the zoning board. And so this was one where I think we just looked at I'm in, I'm looking at it and saying, I think that this is one where the I think the neighborhood will not be um, will not be impacted adversely by this change. Um, and and I think it's permitted and, and I know it's permitted under the zoning bylaws. So this seems to me to be one where our judgment is that this makes sense and that the owner um, has given provided evidence of um, very um, w willingness to manage this property so that it doesn't uh, affect the neighborhood and his uh, long term residence in that neighborhood, even as a uh, that it being his childhood residence um, seems to indicate even more so that so it's not something I'm comfortable with all the time, and I think there's a real problem in town with student rentals creeping. I don't see that this is that, and uh, so I, it's a judgment call in this case, and I'm willing to make the judgment call on behalf of the applicants as I see it in this case. All right. If there's any other comments, this would be the time to have them. Mr. Gibson, if there's anything you wish to say, if not, I'd like to, if not, I'd like to move, um, I would entertain a motion that we move out of the public hearing into a public meeting while keeping the public meeting open to consider um, our um, deliberation on this application. Do I have a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? If not, the chair votes aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Sloviter? Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Mr. White? It's aye. <laughs> it's Amherst. It's Amherst, yeah. <laughs> you can assign anything you want. It doesn't matter. All right. The motion is four to nothing. Uh, it passes. We're now in a public meeting. Um, typically, that's not where we get public comment. It's where we, the board deliberates and where we can consider um, our findings and the conditions. Um, I have no, I think I've stated my intention and my general feelings. I don't know if anybody else feels the need to speak before we go into conditions and into findings. If not, um, let's take a look at the conditions contained in the um, proposed, the draft uh, project analysis project report uh, conditions one through 12. The first one is pretty much boilerplate. You gotta, you gotta build it or um, use it as contained in the, in the submissions. The second, um, uh, in, in, order, yeah, in, in case of, of a sale, the new owner has to come to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to, to go over the management plan. Uh, number three deals with the resident manager, um, and the, the addition here is the state of the management plan. The resident manager shall reside in the studio apartment, and we'll have a lease agreement that is separate from tenants who are not resident managers. Four, there's no more than four unrelated adults. Number five is no more than one adult shall live in the studio apartment. Six, all exterior lighting shall be designed and installed to be downcast and 
um, abide by ZBA rules. Seven, street numbers for the dwelling shall be clearly marked. Eight, parking shall occur on the improved surfaces only. Um, and the parking area shall be constructed in accordance with requirements of Article 7. There should be no more than four cars parked on the property on a regular basis. The trash receptacles shall be screened. The property shall register with the rental registration program. And upon the renewal, again, this is a, this last two are pretty much boilerplate. Upon the annual renewal of the Amherst Residential Re Rental Registration, the applicant shall submit to the building commissioner an up-to-date complaint violation log with the Amherst Inspection Services documenting filed complaints, violations, as well as actions taken as defined under this condition in condition two. Um, so are there any questions regarding the conditions, any additions, modifications, or amendments suggested? Mr. White. Uh, Mr. Chair, on number eight, yep. and this might just me be might be me being an idiot, um, where it says parking shall occur on improved surfaces only. Should that be approved or improved? Improved is a because it's reading defined, improved. Yeah, improved is a defined term that means. Oh, okay. It's not just um, it's not just asphalt. It's mm -hmm. gravel and um, mm -hmm. it's it's delineated in the, the zoning bylaw where it improves surfaces. Mr. Okay. Mark, speak to that more precisely, I'm sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's mainly that you're not on grass. So it's yeah. been improved to some sort of a standard to be used for what its intended purpose is as parking vehicles. Grass or mud, to elaborate further too. Yeah, because grass turns in the mud when you park on it after a while. Yep. Ms. Marshall. Yeah, I don't know if it need be said here or in the lease, or maybe it's part of the rental registration program, but I would think that the resident manager, that contact information for the resident manager needs to be posted or given or something to the four, potentially four people in the other unit. Right, because they they need to contact that person if there's plumbing issue, yeah, or they just contacting the owner. So, I mean, condition three kind of is responsible for anything dealing with the resident manager. I mean, do you want to just add that to that condition, Sarah? Do you think that would make the most sense? Yes. Okay, so I guess the um, tenants of the other unit must have contact info for the resident manager at all right. times okay right. they should, they, yeah they shall receive information okay. on the con contact information yeah. On the yeah i can include that all right any other comments amendments concerns on the conditions if not i would um, entertain a motion that we approve the conditions and block as amended by Ms. Marshall's amendment. So moved. So moved. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? The vote occurs on the motion to uh, approve the conditions as amended. Chair votes aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. And Ms. Marshall? Aye. Uh, vote is four to nothing with one absent. The uh, Conditions are approved. Now we have to make findings under two sections. The first I will screen share momentarily. I apologize for the delay right. in that. The first is under Article 3, dealing with converted dwellings. And we have to find that this is a converted dwelling that complies with Section 3.3241.6, which states that a Proposed conversion shall be suitably located in the neighborhood and an area close to heavily traveled streets, close to businesses, commercial, educational districts, blah, 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 and shall require either owner occupancy or resident manager. And, you know, I think we can find that the McClellan Street is heavily trafficked and is adjacent to the Amherst downtown and that the resident manager will be, uh, there will be a resident manager in the property. So I think Arctic, that's the first finding. Second findings, and I'll read these all in block and then we can discuss them if we if we need to. Uh, 10.38 and 380 and 381 
The proposal is suitably located in the neighborhood which it's proposed and it's compatible with the existing uses. I think we can find that that's the residential district. 10.382, 383, 385, and 387 aren't really applicable. They deal with uh, constituting a nuisance, whether well, the use would constitute a nuisance, would be insubstantially inconvenient or hazardous to abutters, would be a, um, adjoining premises against detrimental and offensive uses, or would, provide, would not provide convenient, safe, or vehicular traffic. Um, none of it, there's no changes in the, um, the structure or the use of this um, property that would implicate that, and I think therefore those are not applicable to this find this um, application. 10.384 deals with adequate and appropriate facilities provided for proper operation. It's, they're on site, um, it's got town sewer and everything else, so appropriate facilities are there. 10.386, proposal ensures that it's conformance with parking and sign regulations. Uh, it does conform with, seven, with Article 7 and 8 of the zoning bylaw. 10.387 was contained up in the uh, earlier non-applicable um, finding. Uh, 10.388 also is not applicable. That deals with adequate space for off-street loading and unloading of vehicles. 10.389, um, 10.389, adequate methods of disposal or storage for sewage or refuge. Uh, they will have trash services uh, available and, for, and trash storage will be shielded and picked up weekly. 10.390 deals with uh, flood hazards. Uh, that's not applicable. 10.391 deals with um, protecting existing feasible, unique, or um, to extent feasible, unique, or important national, historic, or scenic features. Um, I mean, there's no modifications to the existing building, so it doesn't um, implicate that at all. 10.392 provides adequate landscaping, screening of adjacent residential uses, and provision of street trees, etc. Uh, there's no changes from current use, so the finding is. Um, clear there that you can find it doesn't provide, it does provide adequate landscaping. 10.393, the proposed provides for protection of adjacent property from light intrusion. Uh, there's no changing in the lighting plan and all, pl and all lights uh, comply with the, exist with the uh, ZBA rules and regulations. 10.394 deals with steep slopes. We don't have steep slopes, so that's not applicable. 10.395 deals with disharmony with respect to the terrain use scale and architecture of the existing buildings in the vicinity. There's no exterior changes, so that's not applicable. 10.396 deals with screening of storage areas, loading docks, dumpsters, rooftop equipment. To the extent this is applicable, it deals with trash receptacles, which are located uh, and are shielded from the public right away. 10.397, um, again, deals with recreational facilities. There's no change from the existing use and existing special permit. And 10.398, the proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw and the goals of the master plan. This, I, this is in harmony with the, the goal to provide more housing in Amherst. Um, so given those items, are there anybody, is there anybody that has a question about any of those findings? All right. Um, I would entertain a motion that we make the findings required under section 3.32416 and under 10.38 um, through 10 point appropriately through 10.398. Do I have such a motion? I move. Ms. Marshall moves. Is there a second? Mr. Sloboder seconds. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion to make the findings? We can have it. If not, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the findings. Um, the chair votes aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. The vote is four to nothing to, with one absent. The motion carries. The last order of business is the motion to uh, approve the special permit application uh, ZBA, excuse me, I want to get this right, <laughs> ZBA. 2015, nope, that's the old one, ZBA. It's a FY 2024-16. Yes, dash 16. Dash 16. Um, with conditions and to close the public hearing on such 
special permit application. Do I have such a motion? Do we have to, does, do we, we don't have to do anything to the old special permit, right? This is just that that continues on or does, it, do it, does that have to extinguish, Rob? I guess. So I, it's an amendment to the previous permit. No one uh, Rob Mora, correct me if I'm wrong. It doesn't extinguish it, but it just modifies it. Modify. Is that correct? That's the language in the. Yeah, that's correct. You're modifying the prior special permit, so they both have that. Yep, they both okay. have. All right, good. All right, so the motion is to approve the special permit uh, with conditions and to close the public hearing on this matter. Do I have such a motion? Move. <laughs> Marshall moves. Is there a second? Well, Philip should get this one. He's up yeah. There. We got to get Philip in one, but I think oh. <laughs> second. <laughs> we don't want to lose him. Oh, I hear him. All right, we got. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, the vote occurs on the motion. Chair votes aye. Mr. White. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. The vote is four to nothing, uh, with one absent. Four votes are required to approve a special permit. The special permit is approved, and the hearing and the, the public hearing is closed. All right, Mr. Gibson. Good luck. Mr. Chair, did you want me to quickly go over next steps with Mr. Gibson so he's aware of the process? You know, you, you, can, to... you can give him a call. Um, okay. I, I know he's got to run. He, he's been saying that uh, he's got another meeting, so. Sure, I'll follow up with you tomorrow, Craig, and we can talk about the process after the fact. All, All right. right. Take care. The next order of business is public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. And I think we have a we have a public commenter, Rob, Mr. Ken Rosenthal. We have one hand raised, Ken Rosenthal, and he will be given speaking privileges. There we go. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, I'm Ken Rosenthal, 53 Sunset Avenue. My question, I have a question about a previous matter. Uh, several weeks ago, you were considering a matter in South Amherst on land owned by Hampshire College, presented to you by Archipelago for a, uh, for you to uh, approve 10% of uh, commercial space on the main floor rather than 30%, and you approved, you did not approve the 10%. Is that decision final? Is it final and has it been filed? If it's been filed, has it been appealed or has the time for appeal run out? Could you, in other words, just give me the status of where that is, if you know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosenthal. Um, typically, we this is just public comment and not questions of the board, but um, I think we can answer. This is a matter of public records and public documents. Yeah. So, um, Rob, can you give us the status of that? Um, yeah, sure. So that was denied by the board yep. uh, at that meeting. And... The 20-day appeal period had passed. The abutters of that property were notified of the decision of the board and instructions on how to appeal. We never received an appeal from the applicant or the affected neighbors or residents in town. So therefore, uh, the applicant has to wait two years before they can apply for a special permit on that particular property. So that's the status right now. And um, the appeal period had closed, uh, I think it was a month ago. Thank you very much for the information. Yep. Okay. No other requests to speak to the panel that I see. All right. Uh, Rob, uh, what's next order of business is old business and matters that have not come before the, not anticipated in the last 48 hours. Is there um, anything that you've got uh, a meeting in a week and a half? We've got a meeting on the of two items. What do we have after that? What are the two items we have in, in next yeah, week? Sure. Next week it is, yes. Yeah? So next Thursday we have two hearings. The first is for a flag lot, 47 Regate Lane, build a single family home and to approve the flag lot. Um and then we have 180 North Whitney Street, which is to turn a single family structure into a two family non owner occupied duplex. Um David's going to love that one. Uh, <laughs> and um, on May 23rd, which is the meeting after the 9th, uh, we have 
two hearings that are filed, but one that could be filed after the fact. Um, so the two that are filed, the first one's for 98 Fearing Street, which is a property that has an existing uh, three-family apartment structure. They're trying to put a second three-unit uh, apartment building on the same site. Um, so essentially, they're going to have two apartment buildings, but they're proposing to add a second to one that's already there um, and 10 bedrooms in total for that building. And then the other petition is uh, 395 West Street, which is the Amherst Office Park location. They're going to put a mixed use building on sites with nine units and two commercial spaces. As of right now, Mr. Chair, that's all we have. Uh, nothing about the 40B um, filing either. All right. And you're looking for people to get back to you about their availability for the next meeting next Thursday, correct? That's correct. And I know uh, David was the only person so far he said he was available. Uh, Philip is going to be traveling for May. Um, mm -hmm. So he's unavailable. Craig Meadows is unavailable. And Everald is unavailable. So... Most of our full members uh, aren't available. Steve, are you available for a May 9th meeting? That's going to be really hard for me to be available for the May 9th meeting. Back. All right. So the only full member who will be available is Mr. Sloviter. Yeah. <laughs> Which means that we're going to have to find associates who are going to fill in. And Ms. Marshall, I don't know if you're available for May 9th. Um, I it, foresee those hearings not taking more than one meeting um if you're not available that's totally fine but i figured i'd ask since i have you here um i i'll need to check something out that's that fine um so i have to so that means we're going to have to rely on three associates two of them who are new members to the zba to 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 be the panelists for that one that david will have to most likely chair um <laughs> if steve is unavailable so there's a lot to discuss, and that will also be my last zoning board meeting as the staff liaison. So, a fun way to to send off uh, myself. <laughs> then all those nice things that Mr. Slover has been saying about you, you can take back. <laughs> <Right. I'm dead. laughs> Officially, I'll be filing. I'll be filing a complaint with the ZBA. That's for sure. <laughs> Is um, uh, as long as we're on this with. Only one full member and the really experienced, really dignified chair not available. Do we have to have the meeting? Not necessarily. I mean, we could ask the applicants if they'd be willing to continue to like the first June meeting, um, just so Steve can be available. Um, we don't have anything scheduled yet for that meeting. Uh, I believe it's June, June 13th. It's the first that, gym oh, it's June June six is uh the first meeting in June and the solar is scheduled for that day. I have. Yeah. Well that's that's um that's an off meeting. Um sorry, off scheduled meeting date. But Steve, did, you said you weren't available on June thirteenth, right? June thirteenth. Let me just look at my schedule here real quickly. Yeah, sure. Um and we could also um about, I'm sorry, what about May twenty third? May that's, 23rd. That's the... May 23rd is scheduled. So we have two hearings already um, oh. anticipated to be scheduled for that date. So unless the board wants to hear four petitions in the same night, that's, that that's seems a like lot. a lot. Yeah. Um, June 6th, I have um, nothing. I'm, I'm scheduled. I'm, we've got the solar update, which should be quick on June yeah. 6th. So June 6th June... could be a potential date to continue it to, Mr. Chair. I think that would be the most appropriate. Um, and of course, I'll talk with Chris Breshup because she'll probably be taking over for me, and I'll discuss that uh, situation with her. But, Steve, um, we could do a panel where it's just the associates, Mr. Sloviter, and then yourself as the chair. I mean, but I'll he... be back then, too. I'm but sure, I... yeah. Phil will be back 6th. as well. Yeah. And I think, Mr. Uh, I think we have a full panel for June 6th because we went through the – if we want to do, if we want to do June sixth, because mm -hmm. I think solar would be quick, and we want to take these other two, maybe, perhaps, quick applications, yeah. June sixth may be the time to do that because we would. I know that we have a full panel 
Okay. And I think everybody said they were available on June 6th for the solar of the solar. So, so the only thing is uh, three of you would have to be available for the May 23rd. Oh, sorry. The May 9th meeting in order to continue those hearings to June 6th. We so they've been advertised. Do yeah. You do. Just do, can't you just have the chair just. You have to have a quorum. So in order to have the meeting, you need the three voting members for that special permit there um, to vote to continue. And that's it. And then hear those petitions at the when they get moved to June 6th. So that's kind of where the dilemma comes in. So unless could we vote, could we vote now? No, you have to no. wait until May no, 9th. You have to wait. OK. Not yeah. on the agenda. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't been, yeah, not noticed. Well, uh, if it if it helps, I. I think it should be continued because rather than give than these applicants not having as complete and fair a hearing mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. I'm probably I'm not as afraid of being the chair that night as I probably should be, but uh I would my I I would rather it be more properly done. Yeah. I am not, however, afraid to be the chair. If there's three people and all we're doing is continuing, in yeah. which case, then I can, I can read whatever I'm supposed to read and mm -hmm. and entertain a motion. I can mean I could ask the other panelists for the Suitsbury Road Solar, um, and if they could step in for like twenty minutes or so, just really quick, so we can vote to continue it and go from there. But I, you know, I I could call around tomorrow and ask. If they'd be willing to do it for a few minutes, I could ask Everald. Um, Craig, I think, is unavailable. He's out of the country, so he goes out of the country a lot. Um, but yeah, I I'll see what I can do. I mean, we'll we'll make it work, Mr. Chair. Uh, worst case scenario, we could have one full member present, and then have one of the associates step in. So like, if Hilda was available, and yeah. have her in the panel for June six, and just go from there. I I know it makes it very complicated, but we we have a lot of these petitions coming in, and people are you know, limited availability. It's just how it is. Yeah. So what, the, what you're going to try to, to sum it up, you're going to try yeah. to see if you can get three, mem three members for mm -hmm. to continue this to, to the sixth. We have a yep. full panel on the sixth already because of mm -hmm. you know, the solar, we only have four people on the solar panel. Yep. So we need one additional person to be a panel for the two um, additional um, applications that we're, continuing to the sixth right yeah yeah so we have four people for that panel yeah we just need one more we say one more um well yeah also it'll depend on who can make it from that panel to may 9th to vote to continue the hearing right. so in order to vote to continue the yeah. hearing you need at least three panelists from whatever panel is going to vote on that special permit right. so i know that makes it complicated but i'll figure it out i always have a way of making these things work out somehow we will. It'll be done. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's work that out. All righty. Okay. Any other questions about um, upcoming items on the agenda, the schedule, or anything else? All right. Rob, you'll have one more meeting before you go. Thank you for Barely. <laughs> I'm not, and I won't be on it, I don't think. So um, I oh. want to thank you for all your efforts publicly for uh, helping us. You've got a lot of work that we've done and you're a big part of why we're successful. So thank you so much and congratulations on a great, it looks like a great move for you. And um, East Long Meadows, is it East Long Meadow? Mm -hmm. East yep. Long Meadows gains our loss. Uh, we hate to see you go, but good luck. Thank you, I appreciate it. We've had a good time working with this board. David, I think I miss you most of all. Even though you took your kind words back, you, you, you're, you remind me so much of the Mid Atlantic area where I grew up. I I'm from Delaware, so not too far from Philly. Right, and I, and I will be at the meeting on uh, on the sixth. And if I'm yep. the only full member, I'll chair it, and I will be appropriately contemptuous and disdainful of you <laughs> at your last meeting. Thank uh, you, Philip. Solidarity, brother. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna hear real Philadelphia talk. That's I can hear. Yeah, it. Be, yeah. yeah you're in trouble now. <laughs> Still don't know where his favorite hoagie place is, but that's okay. Oh. We'll talk about that later. I knew right. we'd get to food. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> it's dinner time. I'm hungry. That just makes me want to eat. All right. <laughs> if there's nothing else 
Um, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So, second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to and adjourn. Third. Motion is not debatable. The chair votes aye. Mr. White. Aye. Mr. Sloboder. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. Votes four to nothing. Um, motion carries. We are adjourned.